too old for that shit. Uh, hope all's well out there. It's Tom Bukovac. You may know me as Uncle Larry, but uh, I don't even know how that whole thing started. How did Uncle Larry even start? Does anyone remember? People ask me that all the time, but I have no idea. It was just a thing. It was like everything on this channel, it all just sort of happened, right? I don't remember most of it. Let's look and see if we can answer some VCB shit. You guys don't even probably know what VCB means anymore, do you? Well, it's, it means viewer comment bin, which is something I came up with a long time ago. Shout out to Cliff from the LA Vintage Gear. How you doing, bro? I want to say thank you to uh, an old friend of mine, too, for such a sweet email he sent the other day. Dearest uh, Kenny Lesko from Cleveland, Ohio, who I call Kent Leskovic. Man, what a beautiful guy. Uh, when I was a young pup, him and Bubba, Rainbow Instrument Repair at Soja Music. You guys remember Dick Soja? Um, they used to, uh, you know, put up with me back when I was just a, a virile young buck with ideas about how to change out the Floyd on my pink Ibanez. You know, we all went through that phase. I mean, all the guys our age, right? 
And then we ended up with this shit. Because we realized that this shit's better. All right. Um, so let's look into the VCB. Uh, I'm going to go back to volume 160. The honey, the honey man. Okay. Because that was, there was a lot of comments. There was like 500, 500 or some comments on there or something. But you guys like James Honeyman Scott. So do I. Uh, you know, they always, you know, anytime I put up a video where I um, go into somebody else's music and, and talk about it, they always put a uh, copyright thing on it. But they don't ever cancel it or anything. They just want to take the money. I get that. That's cool. Man, it's so good to be home. Uh, I am so enjoying this time with my sweet boys. We are having so much fun. We're going to a demolition derby tonight. It's going to be so much fun. My God, I cannot wait. Okay, uh, man, let's see if we can find a couple of good... Uh, there are a lot of comments about the good tone is heavy and hard to carry. I'm not talking about guitars and pedals when I say that. I mean the amps, bro. If everyone thinks I'm talking about pedals and guitars, I thought you liked light guitars. No, light guitars sound cool. Can sound cool, you know, depending on what they are. Um... A lot of lot of chatter about the the stringing video. I'm I'm done with that. We're not going. We're gonna. We're not gonna talk about that anymore. That was. I'm not trying to. You know, like trying to convince people like to switch things they've been doing for years is pointless. I get all that. You know, it's like trying to get people to change their religion or, uh, you know, things like that. Well, I'm not trying to trying to do. That. I'm just trying to shine a little light onto an area that has not been talked about much as far as I can tell, you know. Uh, the boys at Gruens were kind enough, and that was not a planned thing. I hope you guys know. I just kind of went around to each of them randomly when I was up there wasting their whole afternoon yesterday um, when they could have been working. Um, but, yeah, you know, they all agreed, and I knew they would, and I kind of had a feeling, you know. But, look, you do whatever you want, man. If it makes you happy to tie the strings in a knot, you just fucking do it, man. I'll still get them off. I'll still get them off somehow. Poke my fingers doing it. Uh, what was your first pedal? You guys remember? Somebody asked me that. Mine was a fucking cheap ass 80s DOD flanger. I think it was called a FX75 or something. I didn't quite get it at the time. You know, I, I didn't really come to the pedal thing until a good bit later, you know. Um, I was kind of like a guitar and the amp guy for a long time because I didn't even know pedals were cool. I didn't know that. A um, lot of great chatter on this video here about how great Chrissy Hine and James Honeyman Scott were. And yes, they were. You know, he died at 25, dude. I mean, when I was 25, I was just an embryo. I mean, I, I was like a, like a little child. Um... I can't believe that people in music, certain people have accomplished the things they've accomplished at such young ages, you know. A lot of people ask me, I get a lot of emails, because I've made my email public, as you guys know, um, from young fellas, and they say things like, you know, any advice for a guy in his 20s? And I just say, if you can just get through your 20s without ending up in jail or uh, killing yourself, you're doing good. Because uh, 20s is the time of total confusion. You're not fully developed yet, Brain has no idea what it's supposed to be doing. I mean, this is for most people. I mean, some people are enlightened at an early age, and that, that's that's the Jimi Hendrixes of the world, you know? I was not that guy. I'm a late bloomer. Life didn't start making sense to me until I was about 40. And I'm 53 now. So I'm a real late bloomer, you know? I'm starting to get some of this shit, finally. You know, that people had in their, figured out in their 20s. People developed faster back in the old days, too, I think. They were, there was more uh, adult shit they had to deal with, you know. Uh, man, I can't find a question to answer. Shit, I'm just looking through all these. Uh, uh, thanks to all the guys that put up the Genesis quizzes. I think I did pretty good, you know. Um, you know what I want to get into eventually? I sent, I sent uh, Steve Hackett an email because Mike, Analog Mike was kind enough to uh, hook us up a while back. And uh, I want to learn how to play that, so. That thing in, in Battle of Ebbing Forest, that echo part. I want to learn how to play that. You can find uh, uh, 
isolated guitar of that on YouTube. If you like isolated guitar on Battle of Epping Forest by Genesis, it's the coolest thing. He does this Echoplex thing. It's just amazing, man. Uh, cool chord voicings. I'm gonna learn that. I'm gonna I'm gonna show that to you. I know probably none of you care, but I care. A lot of people like my comment about stonewashed jeans. You know, I really believe that. I, th I think we're just going through a phase right now with this modeling stuff. You know, it'll all be looked back on the way we look back on ADATs. Now, you guys remember those? Uh, man, I just don't have much to talk about. This is kind of a shit episode. <laughs> but I'm, uh, you know, I'm just doing it. I don't know. I'm just going through with it. Let's see if we can find a cool question here. Um, uh, Lord, this is like a comic just dying on stage, you know, right here. Um, just grasping for anything he can. Oh, uh, one guy said, uh, when I was talking about the Dynacomp, uh, remember, uh, he said, I like a CS2 myself, the Boss CS2. Yeah, that's a cool pedal. When I first moved to Nashville, a lot of the real chicken picker guys were playing those the CS2 boss because they're real pukey and splatty. And uh, it's really good for that sort of uh, chicken picking telly thing. I want to say also Miss Melissa. Totally non sequitur here for bringing over some Rolling Rocks last night as a gift and some nice cookies for the boys. Miss Melissa, the greatest. She was a teacher at Micah which is a school my kids used to go to. And uh, she watches the show. Hi, Miss Melissa. Thank you for the delicious cookies. Marshall said after you left, Miss Melissa is the best. She's like the greatest type of person on earth. Thank you for that. You're awesome. Um, there's a lot of stuff about the you do you thing too. You know, one of my uh, pet peeves sayings. Uh, there's a lot of these pet peeve sayings I have. I probably say things that annoy you guys, you know? So that's just that's just part of life. I had a great time uh, hanging out up at Green's yesterday. It was great to hang out with, with Old World, you know, Greggy Voros. We had a blast. They said the business is booming up there, man. They cannot keep guitars in the store. I mean, it's still going on. You know, um, I happened to watch a video the other day. Um, that recently got posted, uh, Red Shul's channel, where him and a couple other fellas, uh, Rick, Rick Beata, who's a buddy of mine, I love Rick. We're talking about our vintage guitar is going to be worth anything when the when the boomers die off. Man, they all had varying opinions, and Rick Beato, who who you know, I normally agree with, was like going off about how they're not going to be worth anything. Like once then, I man, I could not disagree anymore. Oh, Lord. I mean, here's the thing. Let me explain it to you in a way. Okay, see these football cards and shit like this? I'm going to show you. Okay. This football card, this is like a 69 tops, right? And Dick Buckus. See, remember when football cards became fashionable in the 80s, or baseball cards in the 80s? Nobody gave a shit about baseball cards until about the 80s, right? Uh, then they became like super collectible and hip. Like, you know, like everyone was making all these reissue series you know, these are going to be really collectible one day. And, uh, but, but really in the end, when you think about it, what really matters are the ones that survived pre the craze. You see? Because you can't make any more. They're a totally limited supply. Any guitar, like this 57 Special, for example, that survived all this time on Earth without somebody monkeying with it, Right? without somebody refinishing it or routing the pickups or fucking with it, is this is a rare and cool coveted piece that's always gonna be collectible. This is not a reissue. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what I'm, so I'm saying. Guitars became, vintage guitars became popular in the 80s as well, right? I mean, and then people started making reissues, right? Um, but like, Rhett said something that I, that I totally agree with. Uh, he said, uh, you know, people play reissues because they can't afford the originals. Like, if it wasn't a money thing, everyone would always choose the original, right? I agree with that. Of course, these are too much money. Uh, and I think they're they're always going to be cool. Like, young cats coming up are never going to forget about how cool these Golden Age guitars were. Um, uh, I just 
just think it's silly what Rick said, honestly. As much as I love the guy, hey Rick, I love you. I totally disagree with you on that. But I love you, and you've been cool to me. Uh, but everyone, that's what thing that's great about all this stuff, is that, you know, it's all speculation. Nobody knows. Nobody's right. I'm probably totally wrong. But I just feel strongly that these things will always be, you know, well, collectible and cool, you know, and great instruments, you know, on top of being, you know, sort of collector's items, you know. It does bother me a bit when I see, um, um, you know, people that, that hoard these things and they and they put them in places where they, you know, they don't get played much, you know. I, it, that does bother me a little bit, you know. Uh, as long as the guitars are being played, I'm happy. Right, I just don't like it when they're put away in vaults and things where in cases, glass cases where it's like it's like zoos. I never really believed in zoos either. Uh, let the thing be wild, man. Let it do what it's supposed to do. That's what I say. There's another one for the tombstone. Let the thing be wild, right? Although it's nice to be able to go to a zoo and look at all the stuff, like you go to a guitar museum. It's just I always feel bad for the animals and things. You know, I know this this is very. I'm getting way off topic here, but I'm just saying. All right, I think I'm going to shut it down now because with my shitty ghetto internet, it'll take me hours to upload this video. But uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for being part of the homeschooling experience. So, you know, you guys are all right. I feel like I got the coolest viewers of anybody. Um, just, I could tell by the intelligent comments that get left. Uh, some enlightened cats out there. Deep cats. All right. Take it easy, kids. See you later.